So I realized that the audience here is possibly quite mixed. So I, I tried to start from, from some classical concepts, so from classical randomness extractor, extractors, and then uh, motivate uh, our uh, quantum definitions. Okay? So we start with, with classical randomness extractors, and uh, in, in our setup, we will call these classical to classical randomness extractors. And I will just give you a definition and, and um, explain the parameters and, and constructions. And then from this, um, <clears throat> I want to go to these quantum to classical randomness extractors. So I also want to give you the definition here and also some explicit constructions of these extractors. And well, <clears throat> so I guess the main reason why this paper got accepted here is because there's an application in the so-called um, noisy storage model. So that's a two-party cryptographic model. And uh, well, actually, the, the parties here are, are quantum. And they're assumed that they only have like a noisy storage. And under this assumption, some uh, purity can be shown. OK, and uh, it turns out that this, this randomness extraction have actually a very close connection to entropic uncertainty relations with quantum sign information. And this is, well, this is also a reason why, why we came up with this concept. So if I have time, I, I will also <clears throat> tell you a bit about that. But I want to mainly focus on, on the noisy storage application. And then we're just going to yeah, conclude and tell you some open problems. OK, so, so what's the classical uh, randomness extraction? Well, so the basic question is, given an unknown uh, weak source of classical randomness, uh, how can we convert it to, to uniformly random bits? So, so we have some source here, right? So that would be an example of a source which is it's only weakly random, not, but not uniformly random. So how, how can we convert that? Well, and so the idea is we, we can apply a function to it. And, and, and condense it to, to like a, a smaller random variable m. And, and if we choose that function right, we hope that this, the output is uniformly random. So again, here we have an, uh, we have an example. So we, we apply this, this, this function f, which just takes n1 plus n2 plus n3 modulo 2. And then we see that um, the output here is, is nearly random. So the probability of, of a 0 is 0. 0.52, where, whereas for, 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 for one single copy of, of NI, it was just uh, two thirds. OK? So, but <clears throat> now, now the point is that this function, well, this was specifically designed to work for, for, for this input. So, but what we want is that we, we want to find a function that works for all inputs. Only uh, what we want to assume is that we have um, <clears throat> some guarantee about the, the entropy of the source. And uh, well, a meaningful measure here is, is, is the min entropy. It's just defined as minus the logarithm of the, 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 the maximum of the probability distribution. And I want to also write it as a optimal guessing probability of guessing the random variable, because this, well, this can then be generalized to a more general setting. OK, so we want to find a function that, that <clears throat> works if we only know something about the min entropy. And it turns out that this is not possible with using deterministic functions. But what we instead have to do is uh, to invest a small amount of, of perfect randomness. So the idea is we have this, this classical input n, and then we want to apply uh, functions according to some seeds, to, to some randomness. And then over the average, over all these functions, we want that the output is, is, is uniform. OK? And actually, there, there exists uh, the idea of strong extractors. Uh, and they have the property that, that um, seed can be reused. So even after the seed is used, it's, it's, it's still uniform. OK, and so and these classical randomness extractors, they have many applications in information theory, cryptography, computational complexity theory, and so on. And this is a very nice review in reference to. OK, now um, <clears throat> from a cryptographic viewpoint, uh, it's, it's an interesting question how to deal with, with, with prior knowledge. So imagine that we have a second party which, or, which has some knowledge about our source. And then the question is, does, do this randomness extractor still works relative to that, to that second party? And it turns out that for, for, for classical side information, this is no problem at all. You can just use your randomness extraction. But uh, for quantum side information, this is, <coughs> this is not clear. And actually, this, this paper, guy, Gavinsky et al., they give an, an explicit example of a classical extractor which, which fails if uh, one takes quantum sign information into account. OK, so the mathematical model would then be that the source is, is described by a so-called classical quantum state. So the first part is, is still classical. So it's probability distribution. And the second part is quantum system. So these are just like density operators on, on some finite dimensional Hilbert space. OK, so let's have, have a look at, uh, at this setting. 
So we have, we have this classical input, which is correlated to, to some quantum system, okay, this, this red circle, just classical systems, this yellow stuff is, is quantum systems. We have this input, classical quantum state, and then we want to apply some function according to some seed, D, and we want that the output here, well, we want that the output is random, but also not correlated to, to the quantum system anymore, okay? And so, <clears throat> okay, this only has to be the case approximately, and, and the distance measured to choose is, is this trace distance. And this corresponds to a strong extractor because I also write the seed in here, okay? Good, and now, <clears throat> again, we, we want <clears throat> that this whole uh, extractor thing works um, if you only know something about, about the min entropy of the source, and now because we have side information, the right measure is, is this conditional min entropy, and it's, it's defined as minus log, the, the optimal guessing probability, given the quantum side information at hand, okay? Well, I'll just write it like that. Oh, yeah. Okay, and, and one example for this is, is a two-universal hashing, privacy amplification. So it is known that uh, for all classical quantum states with sufficiently high min entropy, the output of the hashing is random and, and no longer correlated to the quantum side information for an output size of two to the power of k times epsilon square. So this is a strong, this is called a strong k epsilon extractor against quantum side information. And here the seed is, is, is of, uh, of the order of, of the input system. This is quite, quite bad, so much better um, constructions are known. But, but again, it's a strong extractor, so, so what can reuse the seed? It's, it's not used up. Okay, uh, well, okay, so that was all about the classical extractors I wanted to tell you. Now let's come to this quantum to classical randomness extractors. Um, <clears throat> so the basic idea is to make the, the input quantum. Before we, we had this classical input system N, and we wanted to extract randomness from that, and now the idea is to, to start with, 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 the, with the quantum system. And well, <clears throat> why is that well motivated? So I would say the basic question is how, how do we get this weak randomness at first? Before, I assume we have some weak source of randomness, and the question is how to get that. And one, one way to get it is, is, is to have a look at, at, at quantum mechanics, to take a quantum source and, and do some measurements on, on this quantum source. Because in, in quantum mechanics, we, we, can, we can get real randomness out, out. Okay, so I want to start with, with a quantum system and see how, how much randomness can we extract from that. So that's, that would be the setup. So we start with, with a quantum system here. And then do some kind, kind of measurements, and, and then we, we end up with, with, with the classical system M. Okay, so, so here in more detail, so if, again, if we consider this quantum side information, we, we have some quantum system N, which can be correlated to some other quantum system E, and then we, we are want to apply our extractor, we want to apply some measurements according to some seed, and in the end, uh, the, <coughs> well, the output is classical at first, and second, it, it, it should <coughs> be random and, and not correlated to E anymore, and again, it's a strong extractor. I also write here, uh, the, the D in here. Okay, and the setup is, should be completely the same as before. So, so we, want, we, have, we assume that we have no control over the source, but only we know something about uh, the conditional min entropy of the source. And now we need a, a fully quantum definition of, of, of this min entropy. See, we, we start with, with, with two quantum systems here. And actually, this, this is a well-known definition. It's given by that. Well, if you've never seen it, it may be <laughs> a bit complicated, but <clears throat> so it's, it's minus log n times the maximization, and here we maximize over, over quantum channels, lambda, and these channels go from the E system to, to some system n, n prime, and n prime is just a copy of n, and then we take this f, f is, is called the fidelity, some kind of a, of a, of a distance measure, uh, from the maximal entangled state here, between n and this copy n prime, um, and uh, the, the channel applied to, to the input state. So this is actually, this is a generalization of, of this, this guessing probability I showed you before. But maybe we, we, we just accept this. I want to make one remark about it. So this is a fully quantum entropy now. It's a conditional entropy, and, and in, in the quantum case, this can get negative. And okay, this is a bit weird at first, but one can make perfect sense out of it. I would say, and in fact, if, if you take this maximal entangled state and put it in here, then this can get as negative as, as minus log n. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so how does the definition look like? This is again, again the setup. Before we have this input system, we want, want to mix it and, and then measure it, and we get we get this classical output system. Okay, and 
So here comes the thing. So the, the, the mixing operation we want to do with, uh, with uh, a unitary operation. So unitary operations, what do they do? They just take one, one basis of, 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 of the Hilbert space of your quantum system and rotate it into to another Hilbert space. And then in the second part, we want to do this, this measurement and, 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 and discarding. So remember that the, the M system is, is at most as large as, as the N system, as the input system. And actually, we can write this whole thing as, as one big measurement map, which I, which I call tau. And, and what, what this map does is it measures in, in one pre, uh, predetermined computational basis of your Hilbert space, and then discards some of the measurement outcomes. And if one now first applies some unitary operation and then this this, this measurement map, then this corresponds to measuring in, in a basis given by this unitary operation, followed by discarding some of, of the measurement outcomes. So, so, so this leads us to, 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 to the main definition of the talk. Um, <clears throat> I define the following thing, a set of unitary operators, U1 to UD, uh, defines a strong K epsilon quantum to classical randomness extractor against quantum side animation. If for any state, rho and E, now, this is fully bipartite quantum state with sufficiently high min entropy. Um, we have this, so let, let me just say here again, this, this min entropy, it can get negative, so this K can also, can also be negative now. So we want that the output of, of, of this map on, on average over all the unitaries um, is, is, is close to, to being mixed and decoupled from, from, from this, this quantum sign information E. And again, I write the seed in here, the D system, because I, I want it to be, to be a strong extractor. Okay, and now um, in, uh, stuff like this has been considered in the literature before, and, and so one example is if we if, if forget about the, the quantum side information here, just delete the E system, then this corresponds to so-called epsilon metric uncertainty relations. And <clears throat> another thing one could also imagine to, to, ha to have a, a, a look at the fully quantum problem of this, so the input system would be quantum and the output system would be quantum too, so, and, and this, is, this is known as the coupling theorems or, or quantum state randomization or also quantum extractors. So we will call this setup just like quantum to quantum randomness extractors. But we're not interested in this, we're really interested in this intermediate thing where we start with a, with a quantum system and end up with, with, with a classical system. Okay, so let's have a look at what we can do. So in this extractor business, one usually starts with, with probabilistic constructions. So here this would correspond to, to random unitaries. And if we take random unitaries, we can show the following. We can show that we can get a, a, an output size of the minimum between n and n times 2 to the power of k times epsilon to the power of 4. And remember this k here, this, this can also get negative. Okay? So if we, if, if we have entanglement between the n system and, and the e system, this, this k can, can actually be negative. So this expression makes, makes sense. And the seed size of, of this probabilistic construction is m times log n times epsilon to the power of minus 4. And actually, that's quite bad. See, the seed has to be basically proportional to the size of, 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 of the output system. So this is quite bad. But again, it's, these are strong extractors, so one can reuse the seed. Okay, so let's look for, for converse bounds. And for, for the output size, we, we can basically get, get, get converse bound that matches this probabilistic construction. So it's, um, M always has to be uh, smaller or equal than N times two to the power of K epsilon. Now this is not exactly two to the power of K, but K epsilon. So this is something which is called a smooth mean entropy. And I don't want to go into details now, I just want to say that this is basically the same, if you think about it in, in a particular way. So the output size, the probabilistic construction give, basically gives you the, the, the optimal output size, but for the seed size, we can only get, get, get the lower bound of, of one over epsilon. So you see we have, we have this huge gap, of the seed size, and actually, um, using our proof techniques, we can also show that we, we can only show that the seed size is, is always lower bounded by basically the, the output size of, of of the extractor. So this is quite bad, um, <clears throat> but I think uh, we have some ideas. And if using um, like a better probabilistic construction, one one should be able to make these two match. But I don't want to talk about that because, well, I don't know how to do it. And um, for the uh, application in, in cryptography, we actually we need to find explicit constructions that have certain properties. Okay, so let's do that. Again, that's a setup. 
So uh, one, one known construction is, is, is what's called the unitary two design or, or almost unitary two design. So, so what, what, what these do, they, they just reproduce the second moment of, of random unitaries. And this actually implies that there are uh, quantum to classic randomness structures with, well, with this given parameters here. Then we, we, we have, a, we have a, a new construction, and this is based on, on a full set of mutually unbiased bases, um, together with, with two wise independent permutations. So unfortunately, I don't really have time to, to go into the details of this construction, but we can use it for, for, for a third construction, which then is going to be useful in, in a cryptographic setting. And um, we call this bitwise quantum to classical randomness extractors. So we have uh, an input system which um, consists of n qubits, an output system, n bits. And then <clears throat> we define our set of unitaries uh, as a full set of mutually unbiased spaces for each qubit. So this just corresponds to three bases for, for each single qubit. And for example, we, we can take the, the poly x, poly y, poly z. And then we, we take the n full, full tensor product of this. And in addition, we, we also put in uh, two wise independent permutations. And then we get, we get a QC random six factor with these parameters. But the important thing here is, is that it's really bitwise. So, so this, these unitaries here, they really have this tensor product structure. The, the, the input is, is n qubit, so it has tensor product structure, but these unitaries also have tensor product structure. So this is, this is very important. And OK, the two wise independent permutations, they don't have this tensor product structure. But what happens is they actually they commute with, with the measurement. So what we can do is just apply these, these unitaries which have tensor product structure, then do the measurement, and then permute the classical uh, measurement outcomes. Okay? So it's important that these, these, these unitaries have this tensor product structure. Okay, so these are the constructions we know. And now I, I want to use this, this last one for, uh, for uh, this two-party cryptography application. So, so one, one example would be secure function evaluation. So we have, we have two parties, Alice, Bob, they have input x and y, and they want to calculate some function f, which depends on x and y, and they can communicate with each other. Now remember, uh, all of this is, is now assumed to be quantum, OK? And well, so why is it called secure function evaluation? Well, the, these, these two parties don't trust each other, so, so Alice should learn, not learn uh, the value of y, and, and, and Bob should not learn uh, the, val the, the value of x, OK? And um, even in the quantum case, it was shown that it's not possible to solve this without, without some assumptions. And uh, well, so classically, usually the kind of assumption one makes to, to solve a task like that are, are some kind of computational assumptions, like factoring is hard or, or whatever. But we don't want to do this. We want to, to make a more physical assumption. So we want to <coughs> assume, well, that the, that the quantum storage these two parties have is bounded. And well, under this assumption, secure function evaluation actually becomes possible. And moreover, the, the honest parties, they don't need an, any quantum, uh, quantum storage to, to implement this protocol. They only need some quantum channel to communicate. So, and so the thing we have a look at is, is not bounded uh, quantum storage, but, but noisy quantum storage. So we assume that the parties only have access to some noisy quantum storage. So what can the adversary do? Well, it's computationally all powerful. It had unlimited classical storage. And actions are instantaneous. So the only restriction we really have is that the, the quantum storage is noisy. And <clears throat> OK, so the setup looks like that. If, if, what can the adversary do? Well, he can do some, some encoding. And then, but at some point, he has, has to store the quantum information he has in, in, in the quantum storage, which is noisy. And then um, <clears throat> the, the classical storage he can, he can just use. And so you can already see from this picture what's the basic idea of this protocol. So the basic idea is that we have waiting times. Because whenever we have a waiting time, the adversary has to store his quantum information uh, in, in, the quantum, in the quantum memory and, and then loses, loses information. And, and based on this assumption, when, when we can actually show using our bitwise quantum classical randomness extraction that the security in this model is linked to the entanglement fidelity of the quantum storage. So, so the worse your, your, your storage is, the, 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 more, the more security you have. And this, technically, this is done using a task called weak string erasure. OK? So well, and then I don't really have time for this, but just want to point out here in this, this last box, so this, this QC extractor, they are very closely related to this entropic uncertainty relation with quantum side information. So if you have one of them, you can also get the other one, and, and vice versa. OK? So we have conclusions, and well, the open problems here, 
well, I, I guess the big open problem is really to, to understand uh, what, what, what would be the, the optimal seed size. And, and uh, there is actually an interesting series of work concerning classical extractions, also against quantum sign information, about getting a, a short seed. Okay, that's it. <laughs>